Yeah. Welcome exactly. to Look at Her, the Eggweed After Show, where we talk to our super celebrity guests and show them all the hoes that they have worked with, and they spill a little tea. Mm. Uh -huh. Or even throw a little shade. Today, our super celebrity guest is our super BFF, Ms. Ginger Man. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> I'll be throwing, I'll be spilling the sweet tea. Yes, today. you will, sweetie. And of course, the gorgeous Miss Lady Red is still here. How are you doing, honey? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Red, there was so much dramatics, we didn't even get time for some Lady Red uh, eye rolls or anything in the last episode. Okay, well, it's no drama with this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were saying that our go-go boy, JJ, it was hard because his name was JJ his, and that your well, brothers are named JJ. Yeah, well, well not of both them. of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, got J and J. It's just two. No, um, no. My my brother's name is JJ. Well, it's John Justin, mm -hmm. but his name is JJ. And I have to say, like, I don't feel too bad. Like, I can think he's attractive because I don't really know him. I didn't see uh -huh. him for fifteen years. Sure. I can look at him and go, "You're attractive. Mm -hmm. You're the pretty one." Right? Yeah. Um, and you'd have to smell farts growing up. That helps when, you know, when you, people think of brothers making He's love. He's so pretentious, the I doubt. I doubt that he ever did. <laughs> He's probably still holding in that same fart from when he was 14 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, uh, I, in other news, I can't fart. I've got so much duct tape up there, it's sealed shut. For wow, me. okay. <laughs> That's terrible. Now it's the lighter side on it. Look at all, we, now we're gonna be having some fun. <laughs> Ginger, you really gave us some great exclusives on that first episode, though. It's honey. your fault. What can I I say? That, I like to bring out the love, I want to hear all the stuff. And I watched all your past interviews. That's all exclusive stuff. But you know why? Know. It's because you and I are friends. Well, all three of us, like, we're friends. Yeah. We have a relationship outside of the show. Mm -hmm. And I feel comfortable telling you these things. Yeah. If somebody like, oh, I'm from this magazine, and I'd <laughs> right. like to, I'm, like, I'm not going to talk to you about no, all exactly. the bullshit that yeah. happened to me yeah. in my life. Uh-huh. No. Well, uh, we're glad to finally get you here. Isn't it nice, Lady Red, having our sis right here? I'm just like... <laughs> Finally, she's here! Finally. All right, Ginger, you know how to play the game. Are you ready? My name is Ginger Minge, and I got something to say. <laughs> All right, let us begin. Look at her. Who is that? <laughs> Who is that? That's Alaska Thunderbird. That's Alaska? Yes. Oh my God, she looks like... Alyssa meets Laganja. Yes, this is in a this dark, dark alley. Sometimes a round of who is she? Uh, who, who that be? Who, who that? Who that bitch? <laughs> um, uh, yes, Miss uh, Alaska Thunderfuck, the winner of All Stars Two. Yes, absolutely undisputed. I, I love Katya. Y'all know I love Katya. She's my BFF. But like, there was no denying Alaska through All Stars 2. Uh -huh. She came in ready to conquer, and she did. Right. And I've always loved her. She's the quintessential Rue gal to me. She's the one that understands the fan base the most. Mm -hmm. She's the one that understands the brand the most. And I think she kind of embodies it. So I, I love her, and I looked up to her as such a fan before I was part of the legacy. So I, I adore her, and I was so happy to see her crowned. I really was. Now, was she cold as ice on the set of All Stars 2? No! Because she was there to win. No, who no? said that? You, on a different interview. I did. <laughs> yeah. I did. Uh, well, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. Yeah, I mean, like, she was certainly there with her game face on. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think she was cold. I, I feel like she was still there and she was still our sister and she loved us, but maybe in the moment she just kind of detached. Right. She was, I think that's a better way of saying it. She was detached right, from everybody, but never cold. And Alaska's not a cold person. No, she's not. She's it's a sweetheart. cold state, not a cold person. <laughs> um, she's actually a doll and I, I really love her. Mm -hmm. A lot. She's great. She is great. And like I said, she is the quintessential Rugal. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Look at her. <laughs> Trixie, Trixie Mattel. Mattel. Um, I love Trixie, even though she she certainly has certain things to say about me. Uh-huh. And certain opinions of me and why I do things or why I say the things I do. I love her, mm -hmm. and I think that it's really great that um, she didn't have the best showing on season seven, 
but she has been one of the few who overcome a poor showing and become a fan favorite. Mm -hmm. And she is one of the fan favorites. Oh yeah, right people now. are obsessed. They're Just obsessed, obsessed in every obsessed. single way. Yeah. I love Trixie, and I, I really hope. Ooh. Jesus oh, you're pulling a Kennedy me. Davenport. You're every year. He's like, I'm gonna take all the earrings, gal. Fly, rings flying. Earrings go. Let's just let loose. Have a let's little more pino. Let loose. Just pull the hair a little <laughs> further yeah, forward. Right, You'll dude. be all right. Can I see my my shot there? We look, oh well Looks no good. we look we look drunk but it's okay. <laughs> um, no, I I absolutely adore Trixie and I hope that if she feels like we have any beef, that it's not. Um, Something that's gonna last forever because I have no problem with her. I love her and I love that she and Katya have created something so beautiful with mm. Yes. <laughs> you know, and, and it really it, it, it's I mean, just, it's, its, it's own beautiful special it's, creation. It totally is. And I love it and I watch it and I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate her. I've always been such um, such a fan. And I've always wanted her to do so well, and she has. Yeah. So uh, if she feels for whatever reason that um, she and I are somehow at odds. Well, I hope she gets over it because I, I really, I'm in her corner. I really am in her corner. Both of them. And yeah. I, I love to see them do well. Good. Look at all. Tatiana. Tati. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. okay. <laughs> I actually have a funny story about Tatiana. Yeah. Okay, I do love her. Uh -huh. She's actually really good friends with my fiance, Chris. Oh, really? Yeah, like they they talk all the time. But when we were in New York City, we were there for a week for the All Stars premiere. And I'm not the healthiest person, obviously. I'm not the pillar of health. But I've been trying to better myself. And there was one night, we had just done the VMA Awards. And... I was laying in bed. My entire left side went numb. Oh my. My arm went numb. My face went numb. Everything, to, I thought I was having a heart attack. And my Chris starts to freak out. So he starts calling all the girls. It's like two o'clock in the morning. He's calling all the girls. Nobody's answering. He didn't think to call ambulance. Instead, he's calling the LaRue girls. He's calling. Dr. Ta Dr. Tatiana, please report to the room. <laughs> I didn't say he was the smartest, but he okay, is the prettiest. Yeah, right. He's the prettiest. So he was calling them all. He was calling, just trying to figure, like, like come here. You're uh, in the same hotel. Right. Please come here and help me. Okay. Because um, I'm like... That's scary, like this, honey. It's super scary. And I'm freaking out. And I, I can't function in the moment. I, I'm literally like, oh, my God, I'm dying. This is it. This is wow. how I go. I'm here. I don't even get to see the season. In retrospect, I wish I hadn't seen the season. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. It's actually kind of the best season ever. Um, so he called, Tatiana finally answered. She was two doors down from us. And <laughs> she's drunk as Cooter Brown, bitch. Uh. She is drunk as Cooter Brown, and she is in that room. And he says, okay, Ginger can't feel her entire left side. Her face, her arm, everything is numb. And it's like, it's dead weight. She can't lift it. She can't do anything. And she's like, oh, my God, she's probably dying of a heart attack. And she's like, okay, read me the symptoms. So she goes on WebMD. No. Oh as God. he's telling, he's asking me questions and giving her the answers, and she's typing it in, and she's like, okay, after 20 minutes, it's probably gas or stress or a combination of both. I go to the hospital. It's gas and stress. Yeah. Dr. Tatiana. But she was literally <laughs> the only one that was like, I don't care how inebriated I am. I don't care what is going on in my world. You're my sister and I'm going to take care of you. God bless Tatiana. I love her. <laughs> I love Tatiana. And she has always been, before All Stars, during season seven when we were doing our tour, I worked with her at town in D.C. Yeah. Which I have to say, I'm so sorry that town is closing. Yeah, I, it's one that's of my, a damn shame. I've spent my like last two birthdays there. I love town, and I particularly love it because of her. And she just, oh my god, from moment one, she has been a true sister. And I love that no matter how fucked up she was, she was like, "I'm gonna take care of you. I may not understand what's going on, <laughs> but I'm gonna take care of you until you either get better or die." That is. 
sweet. Yes. Yes. I love her. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Tatiana. Look at him. Ah! Jiggly. Now you're doing a new show Mrs. with Jiggly. Mrs. Jigglesworth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, Jiggly and I, oh God, you are at the, the end of a whirlwind right here. Right, because you guys just shot. I've been here for episodes? six days. Right. I shot an entire season of a new cooking show called Wigs in a Blanket with <laughs> Miss Jiggly Caliente. <laughs> Um, I, I did a couple of live performances. I've shot six other shows, like maybe 10 episodes worth with World of Wonder. Like, I literally have been doing every, I've been cross-dressing round the clock. Jesus must be so pleased. Hey, you're so happy. <laughs> Y'all doing his work. <laughs> Just because I spent a lot of time on my knees screaming for Jesus. Don't, <laughs> don't mean nothing. <laughs> Um, no, Jiggly and I are doing uh, it, this new cooking show. And it came about because we both contacted David Chapontier from Producer Entertainment and at different times and said, hey, I would like to do a cooking show. So my Chris is, he is, I always want to say ordained chef. Mm -hmm. It's not ordained. No, he's not. I'm an ordained minister, <laughs> just so you know. Ginger um, available for weddings. For, I uh, am. For a price, of course. <laughs> no, I'll do it for cake and champagne. Shit, oh, I don't really? care. Yeah, well, yeah, David like might care, but mm, I don't yeah. care. <laughs> um, so, no, he is, he's a certified chef. He went to CIA. Oh. Which is like one of the biggest. Yeah, it's fancy. You know, it's fancy, fancy. And he's a great cook. So I said, I think it would be interesting if Chris and I got together and did a cooking show. Because I'm a, I'm a good home cook, but I don't really know any of the right. technical stuff. And then Jiggly, meanwhile, had contacted David and said, I would like to do a cooking show that celebrates my history and this and that and the other. So David came to me and he said, you and Jiggly did Christmas hams on the Christmas Queens album last year. You did it on tour for the Christmas Queens tour. It was widely successful. Everybody loves it. And even though you two are complete opposites, everybody seems to like you as a pair. So would you be interested interested in melding your ideas for the cooking show and doing it together? And without hesitation, I said, absolutely. I love Jiggly. A lot of people are going to go, oh, I thought Katya was your best friend. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, my two closest friends from Drag Race are Jiggly and Fifi O'Hara. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's because we've been through a lot of the same kind of struggles with the fan base. Yeah. We identify and we understand. Mm. And Jiggly, even though that we are complete opposites, we have a lot of complementary traits. And it's true, the opposites attract. So we just shot an entire season's worth of this cooking show. That is fun. My recipes <laughs> are amazing and she burns down the kitchen. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Oh my God. And I hope that, I hope that everybody tunes in to watch it. Uh, and I've gotta say, I, Lady Red Couture, I am going to ask you right now, if you will, we, okay, I'm Southern and she's Asian, mm -hmm. we both have very specific recipes for fried chicken. Right. So we did not do a fried chicken episode in the first season. Oh. Because we couldn't decide who was gonna do it. Right. And then we said, you know what? We're going to do it together, and we're gonna have Lady Red Couture. She is the connoisseur of fried chicken. She is going to come on the show, and she's gonna decide once and for all which recipe is the best. That sounds like a very good episode Will to me. Will you do it? <laughs> uh, hell yeah. That's a hell yeah. As long as you send her a car, because she's not taking a bus to West Covina. <laughs> <laughs> California. <laughs> no, girl, that's all right. We'll send you a Lyft, <laughs> not an Uber. Good. We don't we don't get with Uber in these political times. Look at her. The Sasha winner. You know, a lot of people did not expect her to win. And I think I would, so I got to host the season nine premiere. Oh yeah, you did. So you got to see them all Bef be, like, come the to the world. Night, yeah. The moment that they were introduced to the world, I was there. Yeah, you did a great job that night too. Thank I you. watched that all on video, every delicious I loved bite it. of it. I loved it and I was happy to have the opportunity, but more than being happy to have the opportunity, I was happy to see them kind of in that transitional moment for all of them. And there was something about Sasha 
I know everybody expected Shay to win. And if it had been a typical season, Shay would have won. Mm. She won four challenges. She, right. was, she was right there. She was ready. She was primed. But there was something about it that said, Sasha Velour is the winner. And I said that to my Chris. I said it to Fifi, to Jiggly, to anybody that would listen. And they all told me, you're crazy. You're crazy. Shay Coulee is going to win. She is going to win. And when that lip sync twist happened at the end and she all of a sudden started like molting these rose petals, yeah. I said, y'all never want to listen to me. You never want to listen to me, but I always have the opinion that comes from truth. Uh -huh. I said, that bitch is going to win. She is about to get this crown. And they crowned her, and I have never felt more vindicated in my life. Lady even if Red they did too. <laughs> even if they had put that crown on my head on season seven, <laughs> it would not have meant as much as them putting the crown on Sasha Velour's head. Lady Red called that from I don't know what did you call it from Lady Red like like episode three or four I think from episode three. Yeah, I was like, that's it, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Johnny was like, nah. I'm like, watch. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't Absolutely. say that I said, nah. I said, we'll see. Well, because, you know, Johnny, <laughs> you, you know you have your favorite. So it was like, you know, you were like, uh, and especially episode three, you was like, oh, no. You know, Peppermint killing it. No, 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 no. No, Peppermint is my girl so yep. from a long ago. So <laughs> yeah. I was rooting for her. Initially. And let me say, when I first moved to New York City, Peppermint was the first queen that I ever saw. Yeah, she's there. a legend. And part, like, the part of me that is a rational, I love you, oh my God, I'm such a fan kind of person said, Peppermint's going to win, Peppermint should win. But there was something in the back of my head that was like, mm. Yeah, Sasha, Sasha just, Velour is going to win. She was a, a one of a kind in the season yeah. and very, really did deserve to win. And when she pulled out those stunts, Lenny. We did not have a winner that was like Sasha Velour. Yeah. Now, I'm going to say, I think she's gotten a little outspoken since she was crowned. Oh, really? I feel like she said some things that make me step back and go, girl. And like, she what didn't, did she okay. say? I'm listening. She did an interview that said the season nine finale was the most exciting finale because basically everybody that ended up in the finale was worthy of being in the finale. They were an entertainer. And I sat back and I said, bitch, who the fuck do you think you are? Mm. Like everybody that has come before you has laid the path for you to come in here and win. Right. Like, you are the winner that we need right now, but we don't need your fucking attitude. You don't need to, like, like who out of the top three of every other season or top four or whatever, whatever you want to count, who was not worthy of being in the top four? Who do you not consider an, an entertainer? Because if you look at our top four, you have Kennedy, mm -hmm. who is a dancer unlike Amazing. any other. You have, uh, you have Pearl, who is just... She's stunning to look at, and she is such a personality, and she's one that you can look at her and there's something so mystifying <laughs> about her yeah. that you, you're you interested, and yeah. you wanna see what the hell happens next. And then you have Violet, who is just head to toe perfection. Stunning. Just polished and beautiful. And then you have me, who is just kind of your consummate entertainer. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Like, there's something for everybody. Yeah. And I don't necessarily feel like if you look at the season nine finale that that they they um, kind of encompass the entire spectrum mm -hmm. like some of the other seasons. I think they're all very talented, but you look at it and you go, girl, we all held our own. So don't go out there and trash us mm. in front of everybody else because there was something uniquely different about each and every single one of us. And I think that's what made it so exciting because nobody knew who the fuck was gonna win our season. That's true. Nobody knew. Everybody looked at season six and went, oh, well, Bianca's gonna win. That's right. It. Da, 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 da. <laughs> you looked at season eight and went, well, Bob's gonna win. Da, 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 da. But you look at season seven and you literally have no clue which one of the three of us is gonna take it. Mm. And I think that that was completely special. And I think that that was completely beautiful. And I think it's completely valid. So Sasha Velour, for that comment alone, fuck you.
Other than Which that, fan is the, this is the one that I was looking <laughs> Other for. Other than that, I have to say, I love you and I'm so happy you won. And for the views <laughs> that we'll get from that moment, I'll say yes. <laughs> and to uh, Sasha Valor, if you want to come on to respond, I'll say slay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is fun. Okay, look at all. <laughs> Katya. Katya! Okay, now we've delved deep into your best friend, dumb or not. <laughs> um, uh, but you were telling me before that, you know, you and Katya really did, on season seven, have a special bond. Yeah. And we talked about what happened after. Uh, get it on the main interview if you want to hear all about that. But, like, because you guys were the smokers. Yeah. Okay, so when season seven started, I was the only smoker. The only one. Pearl had decided to quit at that point. Katya had just quit because she was quitting everything. Right. And I was the only one left all alone to my own devices. When Katya entered the workroom, nobody really knew what to think of her. She came in spouting Russian, but then she was talking to us in, in an American accent and all that, and it confused a lot of people. Mm. Um, so I was going out to smoke, and she looked just kind of lost. And I asked her to come with me, and she said, oh no, I just quit smoking. Well, just come with me, we'll talk. I do take full responsibility for her smoking 12 packs a day at this point. Wow. Yeah, um, but. Get ready for conscious fans to <laughs> come for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I quit, so she can too. Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, I quit 10 months ago. Congratulations. Oh my, no, no, I quit because I couldn't breathe, and now I can't breathe because I gained 35 pounds <laughs> oh, no. from not smoking. Now I'm just, know. I'm sedimentary right here, like a rock. Um, but Katya and I, we were the first two that kind of got that alone time yeah. together. So we got to really bond and we got to really know each other. And I love her so much because of it. Um, but I, I do take it upon myself that she is as heavy a smoker as she is mm. now. <laughs> Blame Ginger. Blame me. But I, I love her and there's really no way that you can not love her. Yeah, she's very She makes lovable. everybody feel like her best friend. Yeah. 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 So you know what? You can think that I'm her best friend or Trixie's her best friend or you're her best friend. It doesn't fucking matter. Everybody can be Katya's best friend because she's a good fucking person. That's it. Wonderful. Look at her. Who's that? Who is she? Candy Ho. Candy Ho. That must be Thank Photoshop. You, I like that was coming from Lady Red. Right, get a shot of Lady Red. Lean back like a pimp. <laughs> Not paying attention, only person knowing the- No, the, mama. Because Candy Ho, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that must All be right. Photoshop. Candy Ho. Well, I mean, she's no, not actually really, yellow really and purple makeup. in real life. It's, it's put in the right place, it's fine away. <laughs> it's put in the right place. I mean, no shade. Lady Red is reading the corner. I don't even have to. <laughs> no. Um, we talked about this in the we main We talked episode. about this in the main interview. Candy Ho yeah. threw a little shade on this show. You she didn't know why. She threw me shade and- it, the first moment I was like, she's like, I don't know what she does. And of course it was in me to just be a shady queen and be like, I get booked, bitch, that's what I do. But the other part of me was like, well, maybe she doesn't know what I do because mm. we run in completely different circles. Right. You know, especially since the show has ended, she's off doing her thing and I'm off doing mine. But I didn't appreciate that comment because I've always been such a supporter of her. Yeah, you were saying always. that before, yeah. Yeah, I've always been a huge supporter of Candy Ho. Um, and I, I think that she, she and I kind of suffered the same fate. Um, I, on All Stars 2, they, t they tell me all the time, on Reddit especially, I got the Candy Ho edit, which is kind of non-existent. Oh, right. But um, the only difference is I was actually present and doing things in All Stars 2. And in the regular season seven, she didn't, she just kind of sat in the corner. She was, her station was all the way in the back corner and she didn't do anything. And I didn't, I didn't understand it until it was explained to me later that in Puerto Rico, um, they don't do their own makeup and they don't really do their own costumes. They have people that come in and do those and they're just entertainers. Right. She's an incredible entertainer. Mm -hmm. She can dance the house down. 
Like she could probably outdance Kennedy, and that's saying a lot. That is saying a lot. I mean, that's a high opinion for me. But I was a little concerned that she didn't know how to do her makeup. She didn't know anything about comedy, which is important in my life. Um, and she didn't really know much about wardrobe. And it wasn't until later that it all kind of added up and made sense. But it did piss me off when she said some bad things about me. Mm-hmm. So to that I say, fuck you, bitch. But I love you. I love you, girl. I'll see you. I'll see you. It's I'll all right. I'll see you in the street. And we'll fight. We'll fight. Get her. Look at her. <laughs> Who is it? <gasps> Roxy! Roxy! Wow, body for days, honey. Miss Roxy. Yes, body by Mexico. I love that. Her name's Roxy Andrews, and she's here to make it clear. Yes. No, I actually, I love Roxy. Uh, a lot of people don't know that Roxy and I, we pretty much started doing drag around the same time. Mm-hmm. And we grew up together in the drag world. We grew up at the same time. Really? In the same um, area? Or was she from Same Florida area. Too? No, oh, she wow. and I are both from Orlando. Oh, shit. Yeah, we started doing drag in Orlando and we, we kind of grew up from there. And Roxy is what I've always aspired to be because she, um, aside from her edit on season five, she's a very humble person and she's very talented. She's talented in a very different way from me. Mm. She's talented aesthetically. And aesthetics have never, it sounds so terrible. Aesthetics have never been my forte or my driving force in drag. Mine has always been the performance aspect. Sure. So we're kind of two sides of the same coin. Um, we have the same goal in mind, but we, we have different approaches to it. And I've always thought that Orlando was such a beautiful drag community because you have those that are like Roxy that are so stunning just to look at. And she is probably the most stunning queen you're ever going to see. Mm. She is beautiful. And she's one of the few that you can see her up close. And she's going to be just as beautiful as when you see her from 100 feet away through lots of smoke and right. haze. <laughs> she's stunning. But there's also me on the other side who is funny and I can sing and I can do this and that and act and dance and tell jokes and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I've always found us a very complimentary. But there was a time. Oh, we're going to get shady for just a moment. Well, maybe not even shady, but there was a time when Roxy and I didn't get along. And that's because we were pageant girls. And we were oh. running for the same pageant. Uh-huh. And because we represented opposite ends of the spectrum, right. you never knew how it was going to go. Uh-huh. You were like, well, what are they going to value more this time? Are they going to value talent and um, interview more? Or are they going to uh, value evening gown and presentation uh-huh. more? And... Unfortunately for me, but luckily for her, <laughs> they seem to value the beauty aspect mm. more. Um, and and it, was, it was totally fine. And I find her a constant source of inspiration. And I find her a constant beacon of like light and hope in the darkness that is kind of the um, the drag community and, 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 and a lot of things that are happening in the world in general. She is always positive and she's always wonderful and she has always been an advocate of me. Oh, that's very sweet, especially maybe that's why we saw her get saved so many times in all sorts of because people <laughs> fucking love her. My name is Roxy Andrews and I'm here to make it clear. I know you love me, baby, send me home. It was like literally she was asking towards the end of All Stars. She was asking them like like point blank, girl, if you don't think I should be here, send me home, send me home. (laughs) And they were like, Roxy Andrews once lent me a tampon when I was 14 years old. So I'm going to save her. And you could see it on her face every time she was like, oh, my God, I can see how this is going to play out. Oh, honey. (laughs) Hey, hey.